When structuring information in your database, using namespaces can be very tempting. But how useful are they in the long run? Now, a bit of a spoiler alert, I'm not the biggest fan of using namespaces in my own workspace. I do use them and they definitely have their benefits, but I find that they can be quite cumbersome in the long run. So that's the end of the video. Don't use namespaces and make your life easier. Just joking. They are a very divisive topic. Again, there's a little bit of a pun there. And if you go and look at the forums, there's lots of extensive discussion. And it's quite difficult to wade through all these things. So what I wanted to do in this video is quickly break down how namespaces are useful to me, how my approach has evolved, how I use them in my own workspace, and how to go about thinking about if you want to use namespaces in your own workspace too. Now, I've stopped producing this sort of tutorial type video since I published LogSeq Mastery, the course, and I firmly believe that it's important to have a good broad knowledge in order to understand how to use the tool effectively. So if you want that structured guide, have a look at LogSeq Mastery. But I found that I want to really just lower the bar and just put out a little bit more content without such pressure to make sure that it's all perfect and polished like the course is. So this is my attempt at doing that. Feel free to just dive along. There's lots of free resources out there. But as I say, LogSeq Mastery provides a structured approach to learning LogSeq. So let's dive into it now and see how I use namespaces. Just a quick breakdown of the rest of the video. We're first gonna look at what namespaces actually are. Then we're gonna look at the best use cases for them, in my opinion, then the benefits and drawbacks and the verdict, which I have already said. But I'm gonna give a little bit more context over there. So first up, let's look at what namespaces actually are. And let's make this a little bit bigger. So if you think about a hierarchical folder structure in Windows Explorer, here is Windows Explorer. This is my new logo. As if you watched the last video, you'll notice that the channel has rebranded. And if I look up here and I click over there, I see that there are all of these characters here, these backslash characters. And those are the namespace characters. Namespace characters are basically a way to add hierarchy in a file system or separate in a file system. So that's why the joke that namespaces are divisive. The implementation of namespaces in LogSeq is slightly different. The namespace character in LogSeq is using a forward slash. So if I go to my projects page over here and I see all of these forward slashes over here, I have gone and created all of these pages. So let's go to LogSeq Mastery Tutorials and this is the breakdown of the course. Okay, so it's got projects, forward slash, logseek mastery, forward slash, tutorials. Okay, so that is the namespace character. Now, it's not only just about creating hierarchy in your database. And before anyone asks, CSS, there's a link to an article on the CSS that uh, goes into how I've done this because pages normally appear differently with the brackets. For some, I made buttons. After doing a plethora of reading and looking at my own experience of using namespaces, these are the best use cases for namespaces. Now, the first one is the most important one, and that's the disambiguation for the same names in different contexts. So if I'm using one name for something, but it needs to appear in multiple places, I can use a namespace. And one of the things that I've seen for this is thinking about it as a name and a surname. So some helpful examples here, books. So I have got a book principles and I have got a page principles and I don't want those two things to be the same. I want to be able to link to my principles book. And if I go to principles book, that is like adding the surname that says this is a specific thing that I want to go to. Similarly for waking up, I had something about like uh, waking up, I don't know, some comment that I had there, but that's not what I want to get to when I want to go to the waking up book. So I'll go to the waking up book. Okay, so that adding that namespace enables me to disambiguate it and say, this is what I'm actually referring to. So in, if I'm talking about John and John, the one might be John Manning and the other might be John Kruger. So that's one way to, to think about namespaces. Now, since I've brought this up, I thought it would be useful just to show my approach. My approach is to actually use brackets. So I say waking up book. And apparently this is also what Wikipedia does. So this is just a nice approach 
I don't like using namespaces for books. This is what a lot of people do. They will say they'll go books waking up and that creates an index of all your books, which is fine, but I don't like doing that because you can achieve the same thing with page properties. So if I go to my query books, let's actually just go to this waking up book here on the right. And it's got this input books property. So now if I go to my books query over here, query books, it's got this query which finds all pages that have the input property books. So that's how you use page properties to also be able to generate an index for yourself. You don't need to use namespaces for that. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, so other examples in my own workspace, therapy. And this is not to be like super, oh, I go to therapy, but like if you, it's just to show this is actually how I use it. If you go to therapy with different people or you've gone to therapy with different people and you want to reference the, the nodes, it's helpful to go and look there. There's all the people that I've gone to therapy with over the years and I can reference those notes. And relationships, I also say relationships. And I think about that as like relationships with. So it could be like if I'm writing about the relationship with my friend, I can say relationship with this friend. So that would be relationships forward slash and then I write the person's name. So I'm not going to go and show that. That's a little bit personal. Therapy, I don't think you'd be able to go and find those people. Actually, not even relationships. And then the other one is write-ups. So write-ups is when I'm writing about a book. So let's go have a look about this. And okay, so I've queried write-up. So these are some of the books that I've done write-ups on. And if I go into this Anamkara one, for instance, I can see there that I've got this namespace and there is the write-up. So Anamkara is the book itself, but then I did a write-up on the book. So instead of saying write-up of Anamkara, I just said Anamkara forward slash write up. So that just helps me to disambiguate and find those things very easily. And as you saw there, I just, I don't even have to go to the Anamkara page. I could just uh, search through my queries using that, that text, which is write up. So very easy. Or I could just even just say there using plain text. Okay, so there's even more books that I've done write ups on. So you can see here that it's not that I have these perfect systems that I apply and that you know they just scale so beautifully. Like it's all a little bit of a, of a mismatch or mix match. And it's really for me about utility. Like can I find the information that I want? Yes, no. And I don't try and overstructure it. I just try and make it as accessible and quick to get back to as possible. Okay, let's go back to where we were there. Great. Okay, so we've looked at the disambiguation of the same names in different contexts. Let's now have a look at breaking down nodes for large or structured topics. The examples that I'm going to look at here are PKM and then the Enneagram. So the PKM, I have got an index, and I'll get a little bit into the index later, which speaks to all the different things that I've spoken about in terms of PKM or the, the notes that I've taken on PKM in my own workspace. So if I just scroll down here, I've got these ones which are PKM, 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 but I should probably go and classify them because I haven't worked on it in a long time. Bum, bum, where is it? Here we go, PKM challenges. And there was this Tana community thing here which I can break down if I ever want to write about PKM challenges. Okay, so if I go to the Enneagram, you know, hypothetically, the Enneagram has got nine different types. And if I want to talk about Enneagram type threes or type sixes or whatever, I'm a type six, just out of interest. Type three, there we go. It's something which I, I saw some article, which is advice for perfectionists and procrastinators. And it just made me think about the Enneagram type three. Going out to another level is like, if you want to create an index or replicate a folder structure. So this over here is where the namespace query comes in very handy. So that's what I actually did over here on PKM. Let's just go back there for a second. And that syntax is just for well, the, the, the query syntax and then namespace and then PKM. So then I get another set or another block that's got the index of that namespace over there. And the cool thing is that you can do this at multiple different levels. It's quite nice if you have a bunch of to-dos to get this like to read, to watch, 
etc. Let's open this up on the right here. So shift to read. And there, if I just close that here and make it a bit bigger, you see this hierarchy, which is one of the aspects that when I use namespaces, I'm able to access not only link references, but the hierarchy. So I can go up to the hierarchy and then I've got this namespace query and all the things that I want to do. Now, as I say, or if you've watched this channel for a little bit, you'll see that I'm moving this sort of task management and project management over to Tana. But if you're using it for project management, this is still a very nice function to be able to use. The second example that I want to show here is for my course wiki. It made a lot of sense to follow the structured approach so that I could build an index on the course on the website so that when people want to access this. So this is publicly available. It's the updates.logseekmastery.com. And what I've done here is on the Logseek tutorials lessons, I've created a namespace query that then returns this full index back. Now, it doesn't do it in numerical order because it goes 1, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's just because of the way that it recognizes numbers. But nonetheless, I can zoot around here and yeah, find what I want to. So what I can do in this graph as well is I can say Control K, let's see namespaces. If I navigate to namespaces, I find all the lessons that are tagged with namespace. And the ability to use properties is why I've actually moved more away from namespaces because properties allow you to build up from the bottom up approach. So I've got this lesson, which links to multiple different tags, and I don't have to go and build a concept map that says, this is the concept, and then this is the namespace, and then put this underneath there. I can just link it to all these things using page properties. I'm getting a little bit distracted here, but I think this is one of the things that I wanna do more of because you know, as I say, the course is like very structured and I, find myself not expressing myself on the channel anymore. So yeah, getting back into the, the scattered approach here. The components of a project, as you saw in the previous one, I think using properties to build a bottom-up approach is often better, but it, yeah, you can still do this top-down if you want using namespaces. So for instance, if I go to another project that I'm working on, which is Unlock Tana, uh, Unlock Tana, and there you'll see, like I've got a bunch of different things. I'm doing long, form writing on even Tana, I'm doing it in here. Now, if I want to get back to unlock Tana, I can just go to the bottom of this page and there we go, there's the hierarchy, unlock Tana. And there's some of these things that I'm using namespaces for just to like do long form writing and, and capture it in Logsy. So as I say there, I prefer this bottom up approach. Now, something which I don't do, but if you want to do it, you can, you can have your dates accessible in a hierarchy format. And the way you do that is you just go to settings. So up here, settings, and then settings, and then editor. And you can change your preferred date format to be year, 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 month, month, DD. And what this does is it breaks down your years into, or it breaks down your dates into this like hierarchical approach. So I've got 2023, 01, and then the day. So let's have a look at the 24th of May here. And then these are all the things there, but I can't actually click up to 2023 and click to 05, unless I have like a namespace query on all of those pages. So the best approach there and why I don't use this approach is just to use this calendar plugin. So journals calendar plugin. Moving to the benefits of namespaces, besides the disambiguation, which is a major benefit, I think that namespaces can be very helpful with information retrieval and just because of the way that they create an index. So that namespace query, which as I showed, breaks down your, your namespace and shows those hierarchical layers, that is really great to be able to navigate indexes very quickly. So if this is something that you need, you can build that very nicely with the namespace query. The ability to access the hierarchy panel below the link references is also a great way. So you can just collapse your link references and go to navigate to your hierarchy panel. And you can also search through multiple levels of information. So when I showed my PKM tag or my PKM namespace, if I go to the, the root page, the, the, the PKM page, I can see all of the blocks of information that might be tagged with PKM. So I can see at both the zoom down level, so PKM tools, but I can also see PKM at the broader level. So those are some of the benefits of namespaces. Let's look at some of the drawbacks. Unfortunately for me, 
the drawbacks are more than the benefits. So renaming of namespaces can be quite a hack. If your structure changes or your approach to how you want to organize your information changes, you have predefined a top-down breakdown that you then need to go and change. Renaming namespaces is quite difficult. I tried to do this with a PowerShell script once and it was just a complete disaster. Everything got lost. There were multiple things that didn't work out correctly. And I would say you really should know what you're doing in order to do that. I didn't and it was dangerous. Compatibility with other file systems or with other systems, the file names are a little bit ugly. So how it gets saved in your directory is a bit strange and not super compatible with Obsidian. So if you're using Obsidian, which I think a lot of people are using Obsidian and LogSeq at the same time, the namespace characters, so that forward slash, get saved as percentage 2F, which is ASCII or something for URLs. And here's probably a good example for me to go to another one of the namespaces that I use, but let's go to Obsidian to show how it will appear. But what I use in for my writing is a scratchpad. So scratchpad forward slash organizations, scratchpad forward slash personal. That's just the way that I organize my writing. But if I go here and I say match file name, and let's go here and let's say scratchpad. There we go. You can see that that percentage 2F comes in there. So it's, it's probably a bit small here. Let's actually just navigate to the page. And that is not so nice from a you know, longevity perspective and that the fact that everything is saved in different formats. So yeah, that's one of those drawbacks that it's important to be aware of. So the verdict, I feel like I've been very negative on namespaces and it's important just to be aware of these things when you're working with namespaces, like don't get drawn into it because it's the familiar of the folder hierarchy. So is this going to be useful to me in the long run? Do I need an index? Maybe, yes, then I can use that. Now you can also use queries with properties to generate indexes. So this is not the only thing that should be, or not, this isn't the only reason that you should be using namespaces. Do I need to break down information in this way or will it become a burden to maintain? So if you decide to change your approach and you've been using books forward slash book name and you want to change it, that suddenly becomes burden of effort to change. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't go for that approach and the properties is much easier to maintain. And then will I likely want to change this in the future? If yes, don't use namespaces. So even if you think that you're gonna change it, probably best to avoid using namespaces. So that's my harsh critique on namespaces. They are great, you can definitely use them. There are some power, power users. I think there's another level of like power users that exist in the forum who have written a lot about this. And, and LogSeq has built them in for a reason. In my own approach, I prefer to avoid them as much as possible, as I say, except for things that are like very clear to me, like, you know, the therapy example, relationships, just to disambiguate things. And also sometimes to provide a little bit of structure. So the unlock Tana and then the syllabus page, like things that I'm writing on, I, I tend to use that just to break up the main concept from like another concept. So that's that name surname approach. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I'm trying to get back into a more unfiltered approach. So this is you know, my first step back into this. If you want the more structured approach, by all means, have a look at the course. It breaks down LogSeq from start to finish slowly and yeah, helps you to build a strong foundation that helps you to make these decisions for yourself. If you watched that video and it's the first time you've heard anything about properties and it's a major surprise to you, I highly recommend that you learn how to use properties effectively in LogSeq. It really is great to be able to structure your information and add a little bit more meaning to your links. So I've added a link to a video above, which will help you grasp how to use properties in LogSeq. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.